You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hello, welcome to episode 62 of the Soulforge Podcast. Welcome to the Soulforge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Humans have marked their bodies with tattoos for thousands of years. These permanent designs, sometimes plain, sometimes elaborate, always personal, have served as amulets, status symbols, declarations of love, signs of religious beliefs, adornments, and even forms of punishment. Hi, I'm your regular host, Sean, and with me today is... Tracy. How are you doing, Tracy? I'm doing pretty good. Yourself? I'm okay. Back here in the home studio of your uh, living room, mm-hmm. my uh, semi-regular <laughs> recording, recording spot. Recording spot. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Again. Yeah. It's been a while since you've been on the show. Yeah. A few weeks. Yeah. So it was time to have you on. And today, as you may have been able to tell from that opening introduction, which I happen to find somewhere online, we're going to be talking about tattoos. Yay! Ink. Ink. I don't know if you call them anything else, but ink. <laughs> Probably a few things. Yeah. <laughs> ink, tattoos, mind. you know, that Body kind of art. stuff. Body art. There you go. So uh, what I was going to do is do a whole history of tattoos and tattooing and whatnot. Uh, basically, though, uh, when it comes right down to it, I did a bunch of reading online. Mm-hmm. Uh, people have tattooed themselves for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the earliest evidence was the 5,200-year-old uh, Iceman that they found. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. Uh, it, it is. Uh, the Egyptian mummies have evidence of tattoo marks. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So even, even way back then they were doing it. Uh, modern tattooing, of course, um, the electric pen invented by Thomas Edison in 1876 Ooh. and later adapted to tattoo work in, I believe, 1891. Hmm. So that's a brief history of tattoos and tattooing. Yeah. But that introduction that I read that I came across, uh, all kinds of different reasons for tattoos. Right. And that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So what, uh, what do we have? We have uh, sometimes they're plain and sometimes they're elaborate, but they're always personal. I, yeah. I don't know if that's true. Mm, uh, I think people want them to be personal. Yes. But I think tattoos have gotten to be so popular. A lot of people have gotten the same, similar types of tattoos, meaning the same thing. Yes. So in that way, it is it is personal because your reason might be different than the next guy's. True. But you might have this very same tattoo. And that reminds me of uh, last year, I believe it was this time, the uh, local tattoo shop here in Timmins, Pure Addiction Studios, mm, was having yes. a, uh, I think it was a 12-hour tattoo marathon or something. Mm-hmm. And $13 tattoos on Friday the 13th. That's what it was. Yeah. But there was only 30 that you could pick from. Right. And so I was delivering the mail, uh-huh. and all down one block and up the other, uh-huh. there was all these people sitting there. Yes. It looked like they had been there for quite a while. Yeah. I asked somebody finally, what is going on around here? Yeah. Oh, the uh, the tattoo studio, they're they're doing the, the $13 tattoos for, mm-hmm. the, for the Friday here. And, oh, okay. Uh, and then I later saw that there was a booklet mm-hmm. that you could only pick from 30. So right. all these people, and, and there must have been like two or 300 of them, they were all going to yeah. have the same or similar tattoos. Right. So is that personal or is it? are you just doing it because it's cheap? I think depends on the person. Um, I was in that line. What were you? For about an hour. Okay. And I was about 28th or 29th in line. And when I did the calculations, realized that I, if I wanted to get my tattoo, I would still be there till about three or four o'clock in the afternoon. And mm-hmm. this was about 8.30 in the morning. Ooh. And I had already been there an hour. Yeah. And I said, you know what? 
forget it. <laughs> and I left. <laughs> right. As, as a normal person would. Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong with, with, with that, but I don't think people were doing it for the right reason. Perhaps. Well, what is the right reason, though? That is a very good question. And as the article that I found uh, said, uh, they do it for status symbols, declarations of love, signs of religious belief, uh, adornments, which is what these people were doing. They were just getting adornments because mm-hmm. they were all the same and it couldn't have been that personal if, it, if you just had like something to pick from, right? Yes and no, because when uh, the one I would have picked is actually a semicolon. Ah, uh, yes, okay. So uh, for the listeners who, who may not know, that represents depression and how your story goes on. So as it would be used in a sentence, it may seem to be over, but it's not, and the sentence continues just as one's life does with depression. So that would have been the one that I would have gotten. So obviously it's very personal to me because of that my own true. journey with depression, mm-hmm. but it's obviously one that's popular enough for them to choose for it to be one of those 30 this is tattoos. You're right, because I, I know several people who do mm-hmm. have that particular yeah. tattoo. Yeah. And, and not just here in town. Right, right. it's so very common. It is very common, it's very personal. A lot of people are struggling right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, so there, there is that. Mm-hmm. The rest of the designs, though, were like, I think, ghosts and stars. and Cross was one of them. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. There were a couple different flowers and a tree and... A bow or something like that. Yeah, but, I, there, there's nothing. So that some I of them do, don't seem too personal, but that maybe it just doesn't seem that way to you and I. Right, because everybody's journey is separate and individualized and different. Mm. So yeah. you just never know. Yeah, you never know why somebody else got something. Right. Or maybe there was no reason. Yep. Oh, yeah. thirteen dollars for a tattoo. <laughs> Sign, Sign me up. up. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Going back through history, uh, tattoos were often associated with sailors. Right. People from the Navy and whatnot. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, uh, during World War II, people in concentration camps were tattooed with numbers on their arms. Mm-hmm. And I've met several people in my life who have had that. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. It's not something that uh, a lot of them really want to talk about. No, I, I can't imagine. And it's been years since I've come across anybody like that. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, that was... Wow. Mm-hmm. Shocking when I was uh, 10 or 12 years old. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. This is like... Did a... you know what it was? Did you know enough about the history to understand uh, what it was? I may have, or I didn't at the time, but... Did later. Did later, and uh, resequencing or whatever my memories, you know, and mm-hmm. putting those back there, and like, okay, I, yeah, I knew what that meant, or... Yeah, yeah. Whether I did or not at the time, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that that's something. Um I think the first time I came across somebody with tattoos was uh, my future stepfather. Mm, okay. And I was seven years old, and this guy, listeners may have heard of heard of him, Cannon, uh, mm-hmm. my brother Robin's dad, uh, on several episodes where we talked about him. But uh, he, like I say, he claimed or thought he was a biker. Yeah. 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 So he was uh, he was a rather interesting fellow, but he was covered in tattoos. He had. Uh, I, I, it was one where a, a ghost was on a motorcycle, and at the top it said "Live to Ride," and the bottom said "Ride to Live." Mm, he, okay. he he had uh, like a cobra snake on one arm. He he had like seven or eight different tattoos. Okay. Yeah. So. And what, do you remember what you thought about those tattoos when you saw them? Um, I remember when I was seven and I first met him. I, I thought he was the coolest guy ever. Right. And, and you know he uh, he made things out of leather, like saddlebags, right. yeah. uh, belts, and yeah. you name it, and he made it, and I'm like. That guy can do stuff. He's got cool tattoos. I'm yeah. Like, I want a tattoo too. Mm-hmm. And, and so from the time I was seven to you the time I was, yeah, like I, I never knew what I was going to get. Mm-hmm. And, and then, of course, as, as you grow up, you see p- different people with tattoos and d- different uh, meanings from them. The, mm-hmm. the guys with the teardrop uh, tattoos, right. oh, I killed somebody in prison or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen. I saw somebody with a teardrop tattoo not that long ago, and I wondered if that was the actual situation or if they just wanted a teardrop tattoo. It makes you wonder, right? Yeah. Yeah. And because it, it was a young enough woman. Okay. I would guess in her early to mid twenties. Ooh. Not impossible, obviously, but. Right. Anyhow, it just made me wonder. Yeah, and, and then uh, I guess my relationship with tattoos have gone up and down like oh i really want one no you know what only li- low lowlifes have tattoos because <laughs> a lot of the people that canon associated with 
the right. lowlifes. Okay. Uh, but then uh, in my early 20s, in the mid-90s, how many people had tribal tattoos around their biceps? Yes. Every yes. second person you met had one of those tattoos. And so it was like a... Or the barbed wire. The barbed wire, popular yes. popular then. Yes, similar, yeah. Yeah. And so it was very trendy. Yes. And so then it lost its stigma, mm. right? And, and that was a big thing, because only bikers and outlaws had tattoos. Before, yeah. Before, or the sailors, or yeah. people in the yeah. army. Right. Yeah. But now... And heaven forbid a woman have a tattoo. Right? When I was young, there was hardly any women with tattoos. They, they might have had a butterfly on their ankle, or a rose Heart. on their breast, right. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, but not very many. No, and it's still pretty shocking, even now, when you see a woman with a tattoo on her forearm. Because that's a guy thing, mm -hmm. and, and most women like to have tattoos in areas where it's covered up. Right. But there's some, they don't. They have it all over their shoulder, and I'm like, yeah. oh, is that ever cool? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I remember, this is going back probably 15 years, I was working at a corner store, and uh, a guy came in with a tattoo on his on his forearm, mm -hmm. and, and it was a fist. On his forearm or his shoulder? Uh, no, it was, whatever, what is this part? Oh, well, that's more your upper arm. Yeah, and, uh, where's your forearm? This, your lower part of the okay, arm, it's not your forearm, no. right? Where, where your muscles are. Okay. <laughs> you know. Your big muscles if are. You're, if you're Hulk Hogan, you have your 32-inch pythons. Right, right. Right there. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the guy came in, and it was a tattoo of a fist holding wilted flowers. But oh. it was so detailed and so well done. I was like, that is the coolest tattoo wow. I've ever seen. That yeah. sounds kind of weird, but it, it okay. Was, it was very odd, but I hmm. liked it a lot. I kept thinking, what am I going to get for a tattoo? Mm -hmm. And so for pretty much 20 odd years, I had no idea. I know I wanted one, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what to get. Sad part of the podcast, my son passed away and what did I get? I got his name tattooed across my right, uh, not my forearm, <laughs> my, my other part here, the upper part. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was like, okay, that's not bad. And then Trish got the same tattoo, but on her back, but then she designed an angel. Oh, nice. And so I added the angel as well. Okay. Yeah, so that's what yep. that is. And so that's on my right arm. And then my second tattoo, I was like, what should I get for I, I need another tattoo because mm -hmm. they are addictive. They are. And they hurt like hell. They try I, to do. I yeah. have no pain tolerance. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big wimp. But, but uh, worst pain I ever felt. And I was like, okay. But then after a while, the pain memory fades. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Just, just like childbirth. I wouldn't know, but I'll take your word for that. So, uh, yeah. So I was like, what do I get for the next one? And mm -hmm. so later on, our, our son, Bishop, was born. Yeah. And I was like, hmm, that's a really cool name. Am I going to get the chess piece Bishop on my other arm to match the one on the other side? Right. I'm like, mm, I don't really want a chess piece. And I'm like, well, uh, Lance Henriksen, the actor, played Bishop the Android in the Alien movies. I don't really want Lance Henriksen's face <laughs> on my arm. <laughs> So finally, I came across a Bishop mm -hmm. from the X Men. He, ah. he, he's a dude from the future. He comes back in time. He's got all kinds of powers and stuff. Right. And I came across a really cool picture. Yeah. Put it on my left arm. There you go. To balance out yeah. the right arm. And I always said, I have my boys' names on my arms to give mm -hmm. me strength. Oh, that's so, really sweet. So that was a thing that I did. Like it. I like it. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. I do. Thanks. I think I've heard it before, but. You may have. It seemed, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and that, the bishop tattoo, mm -hmm. that was the worst pain I'd ever had. Really? It was brutal. Worse than your other arm. Worse than the other arm. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Because I actually, when I got my first tattoo, uh, Trish went with me, and uh, JC here in town did it. Yeah. What's, what's he got now? He's got permanent and proud tattoos? Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. So it was just in his house. It oh, was, okay. It was way back then. Yeah. And uh, they had told me go to the store and get some Emla cream to put it on your arm and it numbs it. Oh, okay. Like, oh, all right. Okay, I've never had a tattoo. I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. I probably won't be able to stand the pain, so I did. But by the time he set up and everything was done, it had pretty much worn off. Oh, no. Yeah. So <laughs> I still felt the pain. Yeah. But it was it was not as bad as it could have been. Okay. So the left arm with the bishop tattoo, yeah. that was brutal. And so many lines and different colors and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But then... It faded, and I needed to get another one. Right. So what was my third tattoo? I don't know. Which it's, one was your third one? It's the pinup lady on oh, my leg. Oh, yeah. So I took a bunch of pictures. Yeah. And because classic thing that the sailors always had yes. was the pinup lady on their yes. leg. Yeah. So 
I wanted to put my own spin on it. Mm -hmm. So I got a, a, a nice looking picture of a, of a lady's body stretched out on my leg. Mm -hmm. But for the head, I got a Vulcan. <laughs> yes, you laugh. But How did I not know that? I, I must have known because I've seen it, but you, I you guess see? I forgot. Yes. I so for anybody who doesn't know, uh, a Vulcan is a character from Star Trek. Uh, they're like people, except they have no emotions. They don't smile or laugh or cry or anything like that. And they have pointed elf ears. So I, I got the, I took three pictures and had the guy, JC again, mm -hmm. put them all together. Mm -hmm. And so it was a, a smiling Vulcan. A smiling Vulcan. Yes, to, to make a, my own twist on the right. game. Yep. And she's holding a phaser gun. Right. So yes. so these three tattoos that I found and I put yep. them all together and cool. it just worked out. Yep. And sometimes I'm embarrassed by it and probably, Are you? I think I should, probably shouldn't have got that. Really? Yeah. Hmm. yeah that was in uh, 2010, I believe. Okay. And I was like, well, you know what? Sometimes I really like it, and sometimes I'm like, that's kind of silly. I probably shouldn't have done it. But okay. it's just, uh, it's, it's a Vulcan in a, uh, a short blue dress, and she's got her communicator pad badge on the, uh, the left uh, part of her uniform. Hmm. So, there and of go. course, all these tattoos will show up on the Soulforge Facebook page afterwards. Right. We'll post those, and yours as Listeners well, when we get, get into your them. part. Yeah. Uh, so the fourth tattoo that I got was, uh, I don't think I've ever told this story, on the podcast, I may have, uh, when Bridget and I were first getting together, uh, we were sitting in the car, and I, I said to her, you know what, and, and I pulled out a, a package of dice that I bought. <laughs> have I told you the story? Yeah, you've told me. Okay, I'm not sure if the listeners <laughs> know, but I'll tell it again, because it's great. I, I think it's great, too. It's, okay. I love it. So uh, I pulled out a pack of, uh, I think it was five dice that I had bought from Walmart. So I opened the package. I'm just, yeah. When you bought the dice, was this your intention yes, to do? Yes, okay. I bought it on purpose okay. right. to do this exact thing. Okay. And I don't know where I got the idea from, but it was just cheesy enough that I liked it. Okay. So I uh, I roll the window down. I take three of the dice. I throw them out the window. I give her one of the dice. I take one of the dice myself. Yes. Yep. And I tell her, so whenever we're together, we'll always have paradise. Because there was two of them. <laughs> so it's a pair of dice, right? Right, a So pair of course, dice. Captain Cheese Paul here... <laughs> So, so then uh, we went to Montreal for a trip. Mm -hmm. Best trip ever. I've yeah. never been to Montreal. Okay. It was so full of culture and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, she had uh, set up a tattoo sh session for us. So nice. I got uh, one die or dice. Yes. Know, one is called a die. Yes. Yeah. So I got that on my left foot. Right. She got one on her right foot. Right. And so whenever we were standing together, you had we had paradise. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So it was super <laughs> cheese. And of course, I still have it. We're not together, but she tattooed over it and oh. put a spotted owl on it. Perhaps you should get another die, mm -hmm. so you have a paradise of your own. Or I should wait for a woman who's exactly <laughs> cheesy like me to get a tattoo like that on her foot. And I'll say, this was for my ex-wife, but now it can be for you. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be right, what, who, ready what, and willing to do that for you, Sean. wouldn't want that? Right. Right? I'm going to get a matching tattoo for this man who has a tattoo already <laughs> from his ex-wife. Right. That's a great idea. That's a keeper right there, right? Right. <laughs> actually, no, what, sure. I, what I was thinking of actually was getting different dice uh, shapes and designs, mm -hmm. like um, Dungeons and Dragons tat, uh, dice tattoos. Oh, okay. So I yeah. get the 20-sided dice, the 4-sided, right. the 12-sided, and just have them all like on my foot. Just randomly. Just randomly. So then it's the original one is still there, and mm -hmm. I know the meaning. Yes. And even though she erased our history and all that <laughs> stuff, I'm not bitter about it, so... Uh, <laughs> Not that, at all. Be, we'll talk about that more in the Bridget episode. Right. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's what I did okay. there. Yeah. What is the Geekly Oddcast? It's a panel show of television. I mean, seriously, where else was I supposed to go and watch a Gomez Adams ride a rocket ship on a railroad track? Gaming. And the dice say. 17. Oh my god, 17 is Mystic Quest. And whatever comes to mind. Why does Zod need a starship? Alternating Thursdays on the Geekly Oddcast. And then for my fifth and last tattoo, mm -hmm. but not my final tattoo, but the only one, right. the last one I have received so far. Right. Uh, after my mom passed, mm -hmm. uh, my brothers and I sat down and thought, what are we going to do? 
mm-hmm. and so we knew that she really liked Tetley Tea. So, yep. so we came across the uh, the Tetley Tea Man, yep. and we were all supposed to get the exact same one. Mm-hmm. We never ended up doing that. Oh, okay. Uh, me and Brother Robin do have the same Tetley Tea guy, yep. but his has wings on it, um, similar to the mask that the Ultimate Warrior had. He was a wrestler in the 80s. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, anyway. I'm trying he, to picture he, it. I can't, but... That's okay. I'll look he, after. he put his own spin on it. Right. But I got the Tetley Tea guy here, mm-hmm. holding his cup of tea, mm-hmm. and then underneath that... I actually came across a uh, birthday card that mom had Aww. written. It's, it says "Love Mom," and it's actually in her I handwriting. So yeah. Yeah. I love that. The, yeah, in the, somebody's handwriting. When yeah. Passed away. yeah. Yeah, I was glad I was able to find that. And so that's just below my uh, my tattoo of Xander, mm-hmm. who passed away as well. So my right arm is kind of slowly morphing into my memorial arm. Mm-hmm. I want to get. Uh, one for my grandparents, mm-hmm. and uh, I came across a picture recently of my grandfather standing in front of his airplane with his wife, my grandmother, mm-hmm. in the passenger seat, and wow. and her name was Betty Lou, and that was the name of the plane, oh. and it says it right on there. Wow, so that's special. I have to find that picture again. Yeah. And take it to somebody who can actually make it really good. So are you going to get that whole picture on your arm, or just the plane? I'm thinking of. The whole thing. Okay. Like her in the window, yeah. him standing in front of it in his uh, casually elegant pose. <laughs> and uh, I put that right here um, on the top of my shoulder, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So that's that's the idea. I just have to do it and yeah. be able to withstand the pain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why don't we talk about your <laughs> tattoos now? What do you have? Um, my first tattoo was one of those... Uh, I really want to tattoo tattoos. I, uh, I think I was 20. Okay. Uh, would have been 1998, yeah. And I really wanted a tattoo, but didn't really know what I wanted to get. So I ended up choosing a goldfish, <laughs> which is... Did you have a personal connection to a goldfish? I say that I chose it because I'm a Pisces and because at the time I was teaching swimming lessons and working as a lifeguard and blah, 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 but not really, <laughs> honestly. You can, you, can, you can add me into it after the fact. Yeah. But re- in reality, yeah, you just got it because right. you just wanted to tattoo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that really hurt. <laughs> yeah. Where, where'd you put it? It's on my Lower back on the... Traditional tramp stamp area? On the side. Okay. Not in the middle. So I don't know if that's still considered tramp stamp. People don't really say that anymore because everybody has a tattoo on their lower back. Yeah. I know of males that have... Yes. Anyway. Yeah. So anyway, so that was my first tattoo. I I don't know if I regret getting it. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Kind of like how, how you said. I would kind of like to cover it with a much larger tattoo like going a, all the way up my side like a koi fish because that's the traditional <laughs> thing that people cover up tattoos with on those tattoo shows right it's always a koi fish right i'll reason. cover my goldfish with a koi fish <laughs> yes <laughs> okay so what if, what if you had a whole aquarium to your back i could i could have like a whole back piece right and then you can leave the goldfish there and it's it'll fit right in part of your history perfect awesome okay cool. so so you're so that was number one i was 20 I didn't get my next tattoo until I was 35. Okay, well, my first one was when I was 29, so... Yeah. 28, 29. Around, like, yeah, must have been 35. Um, 15 years later. So, yeah, what happened was, um, that was the year my husband and I separated. Mm -hmm. Um, So, things were hard. I guess so. And, uh, you know, very up and down and whatnot, and I wanted something... To represent that, the difficulties I was going through, so I chose a hummingbird. Yeah, yeah, and it's quite beautiful. Um, it's the one I chose is kind of like an artsy, not like a realistic hummingbird. Anyway, the listeners will see it in the in, photos out there on Soulforge podcast Facebook page. Right. So um, I'm going to read to you um, a meaning of a. Uh, Although the hummingbird tattoo often represents overcoming difficult times, it also has many other meanings, including love, joy, hope, life, and charm. And many different cultures and people, to many different cultures and people, the hummingbird is a symbol of peace. It can also represent freedom. So really, I I loved all of that. 
And I also like the fact that the hummingbird is the only bird that can fly forward and backward mm -hmm. and how far they have to fly and considering how tiny they are when they migrate. So uh, that's what I, I wanted. Uh, so I got that on my uh, rib cage on my right side. Okay. That must have hurt. You know what? It, it did at times, but I'm, I'm really ticklish. Oh. So she would put her, rest her hand on my side to tattoo me and the vibration of the needle coming through her hand would tickle. And when I was coming through my research, yeah. it said uh, people who get a tattoo in a ticklish spot, that's one of the worst areas. Yeah, it was so it was hard. Like there was a couple times she had to stop because I couldn't stop laughing. I mean, it tickles. It's not, like, I'm not even laughing. It's something funny. It just tickles. So that was kind of interesting, but it did hurt at, at certain parts. Um, so that was tattoo number two. Tattoo number three, I actually received as a gift from my kids for Mother's Day. Oh, nice. They knew that I wanted uh, a tattoo mm -hmm. of their names. And I wanted to do something different with the names. So many people have their kids' names, which is so special for each of them. Yeah. Um, so I had my son draw out their names, so the, my three kids, Hannah, Owen, and Zoe, into the shape of a heart. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I had that tattooed on my wrist. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I do remember this. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a gray color. A lot of people think it's faded, um, but that's the color I chose. I wanted it there and that I could see it, but not necessarily it doesn't to stand, out. stand out too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was my third tattoo, and then a year after that, I got um, an arrow tattoo. And the reason I chose that is I was going through another, another difficult time and got an arrow because the idea is that an arrow cannot be shot forward and unless you pull it back first. So if you're going through a difficult time, possibly because you're about to be shot forward into something wonderful. Yes, I, I remember and, when you yeah. uh, were getting that. Yeah, so that is on uh, my forearm, on my right arm. Yes, the actual forearm, not the... the... actual forearm. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I have now. I have a Pinterest page for tattoos. Okay. I go through different phases. I want so many different things. Right. So many different things. I've got all kinds of ideas as yeah. well. Yeah, I just don't have the pain tolerance. And, and they're expensive. They're expensive. That's the that's the big thing for me. Is mm -hmm. that the, I'm, I don't think I have a wonderful pain tolerance either, but they are expensive. Yeah. Um, so if you could get a tattoo right now, yeah. and you had the money for it, what would you get? I would probably get the airplane with the grandparents. Mm -hmm. uh, but I always had this silly idea in my head where I'd get a full back tattoo of a dragon flying up my back. Right. With yes. the uh, yeah. with the tail going down right. between my butt cheeks, yep. and then uh, the the flames of the dragon breath going over my head, and then being <laughs> like coming right to my forehead like flames, but also like hair. <laughs> but that like that would be okay. Great... You had me in, until that part. Yeah. See, that that would be like a great um, uh, like somebody on TV, right? Like, like a character of some kind. Right. Who... So just I'm. Just so the listeners know, I'm really laughing because Sean, when he was explaining that, took his fingers and went from behind his head over into and covering his forehead and his eyebrows. Yes. So, so it's the imagine the flame, the flame coming <laughs> down into his eyebrows. Yeah. So would you then dye your eyebrows the same color? No, no. <laughs> and I would never do that. But it's just this idea I've always yeah. had in my head. Interesting. Uh, I'd also like to have... And for like maybe for the last 10 years, I thought mm -hmm. this a ripped skin tattoo mm -hmm. uh, with like circuit boards right. or like, That's the, cool. like the Terminator yep. in, in that movie, if you've seen it, mm -hmm. where yep. he has to rip his flesh open and he, you see the, the pistons of his finger, yeah. whatever's, uh, I, I don't know what you call it, <laughs> but anyway, like a very uh, mechanical tattoo, like I'm a robot underneath. Right. That's so, kind of neat. That, that's always been an idea. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So. I think if, um... The one I want right now with the most is the semicolon. Mm -hmm. um, Where would you put it? Probably right here next to my scar, actually. By the arrow. Yeah. Right. Up above the arrow. If I had, this, this is being paid for for me. Mm -hmm. There is a lion tattoo, so it's the head of a lion. Okay. On my thigh. Okay. It's quite 
It's it's feminine. I'll show you the picture. Maybe we can also put that on the Facebook That's page. That's a good idea. Um, anybody wanting to make donations, I can give them my email address. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Classy. That's a, that's a good move. If we're getting yeah. donated, then right. I would like a life-size tattoo, only two inches taller and with more muscles and hair. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that was always a joke that I made, too. Yeah. I'd like to be right. two inches taller with more muscles. That, that would be good. Just, yeah, just have the muscles tattooed right in. That's right. Right. What could you know, be like those people that have the makeup abs or whatever? Well, yeah. 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 There you go. We'll Definitely. Be all set. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sounds uh, good. Who's more funny than us? Nobody. Nobody? Nobody's more fun than us. Yeah. So yeah, so that's uh, a brief history of tattoos. Anything else you can think of to, to say? I, I think basically uh, everybody, or most people now have tattoos. The mm -hmm. stigma has been gone or removed. For uh, younger people, anyhow. For younger people. Yeah. The only thing that I really don't like are neck tattoos and tattoos on your face. Face tattoos, yeah, I don't, just, I'm not a fan of. But... No, but I, do, I doesn't I don't judge people who have them. I personally don't like them, and I wouldn't want it. Right. But that's your face. So. That's it. Yep. You yeah. have to. You have to do what your own. Uh, mm -hmm. So if our listeners have any tattoos, like how I said, our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> if the listeners have any tattoos they want to share, maybe share their story as well. Um, they could put it um, on the Facebook page. Yeah. Right when we put ours. That's right. Just uh, yeah. just go to facebook.com slash Soulforge Podcast. Mm -hmm. They can even uh, tweet us. Right. Uh, at Soulforge Pod on mm -hmm. the Twitter. Yeah. And uh, if they would like to email it, they could email it to soulforgepodcast at gmail.com and I can post it on the Facebook page uh -huh. if they don't know how to do that. Excellent. Yeah. And I'd if, love to see that. I love tattoos. Right? They're awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, listeners. Thanks for stopping by The Forge and listening to our tattoo story. If you have any uh, stories of your own or whatever, just email us, text us. Well, tweet us, I guess. You can't really text us. We're not going <laughs> to give you our phone numbers because then that goes out over the uh, internet. And right. Anybody in the world could start texting us and that would be bad. Yeah. So. Unless it's The Rock. He can text me. The Rock? Yeah. Dwayne The Rock Johnson? Yeah, because he's got nice tattoos too. He does have a lot of good tattoos. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. Yummy. <laughs> nice. And on that uh, delicious note, uh, we will talk to you next week. And until then, remember, there is no elevator to success, only stairs. This has been another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Contact the show by emailing soulforgepodcast at gmail.com or by tweeting soulforgepod on Twitter. Visit us at soulforgepodcast.com. And remember, the best way to show your support is by leaving a five-star review in the iTunes store. And if you would... Please check us out and like us on Facebook. The Soul Forge podcast was written, produced, scored, edited, engineered, and directed by Sean Vanderloo. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vanderloo. For more great content, you can listen to my other podcast, The Rusted Robot. Thanks for stopping by The Forge. We'll keep the fires lit until your next visit. I could do this all day. Oh, hey, guys. I was just getting a new tattoo. Have you ever wondered when tattoo became a thing? In 1991, two German hikers stumbled upon a man whose body had been preserved for 5,000 years by being frozen in a glacier. Historians call this guy Otzi the Iceman. When his body was studied, they found that he had over 57 tattoos. Otzi is the most ancient of humans that has been discovered with tattoos. There are also mummies from the ancient worlds of Egypt and Nubia that have been found to have tattoos of dots, lines, and other markings. While the purpose and the meanings of these tattoos are not very well known, it makes it clear that we definitely have some commonalities with our ancient ancestors. Tattooing has also been considered a taboo in ancient history. The taboo of tattooing goes as far back as the roots of Judaism and Christianity. The first Christian emperor of Rome, Constantine, officially banned the practice of facial tattooing in 316 due to his Christian beliefs. Many people today are also familiar with the full body tattoos of the infamous Japanese gangsters, the Yakuza. Japan, like many other cultures, has a deep history of tattoos. However, it became unpopular there from the 700s to the 1700s when Japanese officials decided to use the art as a way to punish criminals for their crimes. Similarly to the Yakuza, Russian gangsters are covered in tattoos. 
One of the earliest accounts of tattoos in Russia was in the 900s when an official from the Arabian Peninsula was traveling through the region and ran into a group of European men who were tattooed from fingernails to neck with dark lines and other figures on their bodies. Tattooing didn't become popularized in the West until the Polynesian islands were discovered by Captain James Cook. The Polynesian people have a tradition of detailed facial tattoos that are often related to their status in their tribes and their tribal history. About a hundred years later, the first tattooing parlor of the United States was opened up in New York City by a man named Martin Hedelbrandt. Hedelbrandt mostly serviced soldiers who fought in the Civil War and didn't discriminate between sides. He tattooed both northern and southerners that were fighting in the war. In 1961, tattoos were officially banned in New York City, and the city of New York declared it to be unlawful for any person to tattoo a human being. It remained illegal to tattoo anyone there until 1997. Since then, tattoos have become a part of mainstream American culture, which at one time, a sign of defiance, now has become an acceptable form of expression. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.